Hey guys, I thought I'd just broadcast live to the world about cellular transport, because I'm cool. Um, so here, we got cellular transport. Well, I just wrote transport, but, you know, more effectively, I would have written cellular transport. And that's divided into two main branches that we learned about in class. The first is passive transport, the second is active. Those are the two main divisions that you're going to want to think about. Now, of course, all these things, as you can see from my diagram, can be further subdivided. Like, for example, in passive transport here, I have it separated into filtration and diffusion. Recall f that from class that filtration uses um, the concentration gradient of the molecules, whereas diffusion... I'm sorry... Um, Filtration uses hydrostatic pressure, which, whereas diffusion uses concentration gradient, concentration gradient of the molecules. Now, diffusion is further separated into simple and facilitated. Um, simple is just sort of passive molecules diffusing across the membrane. Facilitated is when you actually incorporate proteins to do that. Um, there are two types of proteins we talked about. The first is a channel, and the second is a carrier. Um, channels, we talked about voltage and ligand-gated, um, and we talked about that in relation to the neuromuscular junction which, you know, he likes to ask about, so you should probably go back over that if you if you haven't already. Um, and the second one, uh, the second type of protein, the carrier protein, we talked about aquaporin, which is used to efficiently transport um, water across the across the cell membrane. Okay, um, going down to active transport, which you see right here, um, there are two types, again, that we talked about in class. First one is ports, and we talked about the symport, the uniport, and the antiport. For the... Um, for the uniport, you know, you can just have sort of Na plus or K plus just diffusing. Well, not diffusing. Um, that's, that's sorry, that's completely incorrect. Being transported across the membrane um, by by the uniports, and that does require ATP. Um, uh, of course, that's what active transport means. And then for the symport, um, the ones we went over were the Na plus glucose um, and the lactose permease. Lactose permease transports um, lactose and hydrogen the same direction into the cell, and the Na plus glucose. Um, tr transport Na plus and glucose together into the cell. So in both cases, you have a sugar and a cation going into the cell. Um, with the antiport, it's slightly, you know, marginally more complex because the uh, molecules are going in different directions. Like for example, we talked about the sodium pot potassium antiport, and you have two K plus going into the cell, and then three sodium going out of the cell. Um, I do not know where that happens, but it wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprising me if it happened in the neurosystem. All right. Sorry, the nervous system. Um, and then the last sort of uh, bulk transport we talked about, or active transport we talked about, is bulk transport. Um, there are four types of that that we spoke of. Um, penocytosis is cell drinking or intake of liquid molecules into the cell. Phagocytosis is cell eating or intake of solid molecules into the cell. Receptor-mediated endocytosis is when you actually have sort of like proteins that change conformation and bring um, molecules into the cell. The example that we used was LDL or low density lipoprotein which binds to its receptor um, then when it binds it causes clathrin proteins to, to create a coated pit and then a coated vesicle and then the clathrin proteins migrate back to the cell membrane and the uh, receptors are you know um, I guess recreated or reused and um, you can do that do that um, process all over again to prevent the buildup of LDL in the blood um, that was what we talked about in relation to receptor mediated endocytosis and then the last one um, in terms of bulk transport is exocytosis, which is just transporting um, molecules out of the cell. Um, and, and bulk transport, just to give a definition, means transportation of large amounts or large molecules into or out of the cell. Um, now, my goal in making this video is actually not to um, give all the information. Like, for example, with filtration up here, I barely even mentioned it. I think I just said that, um, that you know, it's, it's mode of operation. But... In class, we talked about that in relation to the nephron in the in the kidney, and um, you know how that works. But um, you know the important thing that I want you to see here is just how this information can be organized. Because if you have it all in one sheet here, and you can see like the major divisions and then progressively more minor divisions, I think it really helps to uh, organize the information um, and and be able to study it more effectively. So anyway, use I, I'd say use this if you think it's helpful, and then sort of fill in under each subheading um, more and more detailed information about about how we actually brought these things up in class and then the examples that we used for each heading. Alright, I hope that helps. Thank you very much.